Hello everyone, Youngling Jr. I want to have been talking about this uh, Alex Murdoch trial. Alex Murdoch, those of you don't know, he's a South Carolina attorney. He's been an attorney since the 90s. And, you know, he was, uh, this, this is a high profile case. You know, he's actually been uh, in charge for uh, double murder crime, double homicide of his wife, Maggie, 52 years of age, and I believe his son, Paul Murdoch. And also, too, he was been uh, charged with other crimes due to tax invasion. And I believe in history, he's been um, stealing a lot of money and money laundering uh, from his tax and law firms. And it's, uh, you know, this is a really horrible situation right now. So uh, this the, with the double murders happened back in June 7th, right, on uh, 2021. And, um, you know, he they gonna say allegedly because in the sense of proven guilty. But it's just like this is, uh, you know, the trial is still going on. But his wife. Uh, had you know, severe gunshot wounds and then his son um, was had the brain matter and tissue which is everywhere like you know uh, due to a shotgun and a rifle and so uh, according to you know Alex Murdoch he actually called the police he called first responders and he was saying hey come here here immediately my family's been shot we either murdered uh, I need you guys to come here immediately but you know according to that call which was found strange when uh, Sergeant Green was actually testifying I believe yesterday he said like hey yeah he called 911 but what seemed kind of odd is that he abruptly ended the 911 call saying hey i gotta uh, call my family so anyway they uh moving forward they end up responding and i believe on uh, the Collinson county in south carolina uh you had jason chapman uh he was the major there and um he actually found like some type when they was doing the investigations and they found him dead um he actually found like some type of uh tracks uh footprints and it actually led to uh, Maggie, which was his wife, you know, uh, the day that she was executed. Right. And um, he when he um, saw the investigators there and they was like analyzing the evidence and looking at the tracks and things of that nature. They said his demeanor started to change immediately. Um, you know, he noticed that he started to get a little Frankie. He wasn't even like crying or nothing like he was started to look and observe the investigators closely so that was another thing uh which i find this really interesting when i was reading further is that you know with daniel green uh sergeant green um he was like okay well you know they find some tire tracks as well but you know they didn't really like pursue the evidence because it was later being destroyed now according to his attorney uh alex martin our defense attorney he was stating that hey you know uh he believed that uh, the law enforcement contaminated the evidence. They didn't insulate themselves when they were just picking up things like the shells and things of that nature in the body. So they just did everything they wanted to do, you know, without the uh, proper uh, protective gown, the PPE. And, you know, uh, Sergeant Green admitted that, yes, you know, in our department, we did not have uh, any protective gear uh, at that time when he was on scene, right? So he was trying to leave in the defense like, yes, I understand that, hey, you know, his son is dead and his mat brain matters are everywhere. But at the same time, though, he believed that it has no link or it doesn't ties to his client. So this is a huge ongoing battle here right now. Now, if you think about this, too, you look at it in history. Back in 2019, his son, Paul um, you know, Murdoch, was on a boating trip. Now, he has a son named Buster Murdoch. Buster Murdoch was actually uh, going to school to be an attorney as well. He, I think he attended the University of South Carolina, uh, South Carolina Law School. And he was later kicked off. Um, from that school because due to plagiarism and then i think at the time that his um his father alex um tried to pay an attorney sixty thousand dollars to get him readmitted um so he actually was a defense there and uh, paul was actually kind of um got into a big trouble and as well his kids got into big trouble because he uh, at the time paul was underage right you know and um he actually used his Big's brother's ID to purchase alcohol for the boating trip. And this came to a whole thing because um, he crashed the boat. He, I believe he was intoxicated. He crashed the boat in the bridge and killed Mallory Beach. All right. And injured four others. Now, he was thinking that Alex in his mindset, like, you know, the reason why, you know, these people were my son was killed and this horrific thing happens because, you know, he, it was threats. It was threats because of that boat accident. You know, they wanted to get their revenge type stuff. Right. And he even informed 911 called. I think they played the audio there during court. He started breaking down, crying and whatever. And you saying that he checked the bodies. Uh, it was just cam footage there too of Daniel Green. You have to look at it on Law and Crime and Network. It's really going to explain a little bit of everything that's going on because this is a high profile case right now. Now, if he's convicted of all these crimes, uh, he can serve at least a minimum of 30 years in prison without parole. So, um, but you know what I found? Uh, another a thrilling thing is that 
I believe that it was another um, the defense attorney, not defense attorney. Uh, I believe it was the prosecutor. I think it was named Creighton. I don't have my notes here. I think it was Creighton um, Walters. I believe uh, he was saying that you know uh, when Alex murdered uh, one week after the murders, right? He uh, it was kind of evidence that okay he actually had a blue raincoat and he went to his mother's home. All right. And he had gunshot residue there. Now, that was huge in the court during the cross examination. And I'm just like, dang, are you serious? Like, you know, so, you know, and also, too, they was linking to the um, the cell phone, the cell phone data that, OK, around the time that, you know, his uh, family was murdered. Right. Um, his, his phone was like, OK, but it, like their parents, his his um, his wife's and his son's phone, like they're completely their data was just silent everything was completely silent then he went back to retrieve a gun too so they actually showed that gun out in court as well so um then i think they didn't find any rounds it was just like uh shotgun shells but it kind of linked to like okay this is alex murdoch you know this one you know he later been arrested but man you know this is i'm gonna definitely follow more in this case i think in the next few hours they're gonna start back up uh burst of murdoch and his uh girlfriend at the time I think girlfriend right now is actually they was at the case, uh, they was at the trial. So, um, you know, the 12 men in the jury, man, they just got to, you know, like I said, make a men and women in the jury. They got to make a, a decision here uh, doing this cross examination. It's pretty much the state going against them. Um, you know, it's just really it's really unfortunate circumstances. You know, people could believe like this was highly motivated due to because a wrongful death lawsuit due to that boat, boating accident. And, um, you know, he was probably in debt. It probably led to a lot of his money laundering schemes and drug related crimes. Um, you know, this is uh, horrific right here um, at the end of the day, man. So I'm definitely going to, you know, look more into this. OK, um, you know, so we really, really going to have to see, man. But uh, it's just, you know, it's just unfortunate, man. You know, like, you know, his, his family is just done, you know. So I always have to say allegedly, though, even though this might be some amount of evidence if Alex did really do this. But, man, it's... Um, you know, it has 1,700 acre estate, right, <laughs> in South Carolina. You know, it's like a little hunting uh, firm. And uh, one of his, uh, I think the family, and his defense attorney was stating, like, it's nothing but love he has for his family. It's always love. They do so many things together. He's trying to put them through school. He'll do everything, anything for his kids, you know. So he's trying to lead on to that defense. But I don't know, man. It's, it's, it's going to be hard to prove this reasonable doubt to this jury. But it's all up to the jurors and see what they say. You know, this is going to be at least a three-week a uh, long trial. I can see them dragging this out. This is going to be pretty long and hefty, though. So, um, like I said, I just to the victims and the families, man. This is this is uh, it's really sad, though. But I'm gonna keep my eye on this. I uh, just like like a run dry, um, little summary of what's going on so far. Of course, there's going to be more information, um, as time progress on this case. But I just want to talk about this since it's fresh in my head right now. And it's Alex Murdoch, um, high profile case. And let me guys, let me know too in the comment section if you guys are following on the Alex Murdoch on trial case. You know, just let me know too. Um, this I almost want to cover a lot of um, high profile cases here. But um, yeah, that's all we have to say. If you guys have any additional information, man, just let me know. Y'all like, comment, subscribe. Tell me which guys' thoughts, man, because I, I want everyone's opinion on here. I love you guys, man. Take care. I'm out. Deuces.